Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 1.6. Today we're going to talk about strings. Now, strings are just a way of storing multiple characters. So if you look online or anything, or any online forms you have to fill out, or any programs you type stuff in, you're, you're probably typing in like your name, your address, your birthday, all that stuff that's more than just one character. It's not just a yes or no y slash n question. So we're going to talk about how to do that today. So first I have two vocabulary words for you. I know, right? First one is a string. A string is simply a data type that holds multiple characters under the same name. Think of a character as a, think of a string as an array of characters. Now you probably don't know what an array is, so I defined that for you here. An array is a type of data structure that holds multiple values underneath the same name. So that allows you to access many different values using the same variable name rather than making a ton of different variables. So say you had like um, a football team and um, you wanted to store the roster in a program. So you make a, an array, so, so to speak, um, of all the names of the players on the team and then you can just add the names to the array and then you can just say the team I want this character uh, not character this uh, player or the team I want this player and so on and so forth so strings is just an array of characters and it holds multiple characters so that way it'll hold like a name or something but now that I've told you what an array is forget it because we're going to learn that later, and it'll just confuse you. I just thought I didn't need to lie to you. So forget everything about arrays that you learned, unless you just really want to know it. <laughs> but I advise forgetting it, and just just think of a string as holding a name or a whole word. There you go. A string holds a word. So without further ado, here's a program to demonstrate the use. So as you can see, we have a character entitled name, and we're asking the user for their name. And then we're getting the input from them and saving it inside name, clearing the buffer, and then we're displaying their name right back out to them, pausing the program, and then closing it. So let's see how this runs. Nope. Oh. Okay, we just got the manifest error. I hate that error. Type your name, Tyler. As you can see, the program completely closes once I hit enter. Now, theoretically, the program would display my name, right? Well, actually, a character holds one character. So, theoretically, this program should just display T. What happens is, the uh, whenever it gets here and we hit enter, one character is saved inside the variable. It takes the T. Everything else is left. So then, with cnd.ignore, it clears the input buffer of any trash, such as like uh, any uh, return carriages or anything like that. And then it moves on to your name is, and it displays um, what's left. So really, it would display just a T, just a capital T, because that's all that got saved in the variable. And then cn.get, all of the remaining things that were in the input buffer is passed through there, and it closes the program instantly. So you don't really get to look at it. So really, it does display T. You just don't get to look at it because it closes instantly. Um, so we have to figure out a way how to save the entire word rather than just a letter. And the solution is very simple. A string. All we got to do is change the, the character to a string. And also add the header, pound include string. So we're in including the string library. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that string doesn't light up like all the other variable names do. That's because string is not really part of the official C++ language. It's added into the language through the standard namespace. So really, it's just an added-on data type, and it's not really an official, quote, quote, data type in the language, although it really is, but it just doesn't light up. You'll figure out more about why it doesn't light up a little later on, but we're just going to just keep string, just no string. So when we run this again, type your name, Tyler. Your name is Tyler. Very good. 
and it closes with one enter and everything. It works perfectly. So that's pretty much all I want you to know about strings right now. Um, but there is one thing I want you to try out, and there's a few things I want you to notice. The things you want to notice is strings are output the same way as anything else with a C out, just the same. Another thing is strings are also input the same way. You just use CN just like everything else. And you also need to use CN.ignore because CN is doing your dirty work and you got to clean up after him because he leaves some dirty messes. And uh, there's one thing I want you to try. Try to input a string that contains a space and see what happens. Also, try to figure out why it does what it does. And then Google around and try to remedy it, try to fix it, try to make it where it works perfectly. That's all I have for you for this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson, 1.7. Thank you.